Hey you guys, uh, we got some work ahead of us today. I have to do some cleanup on the tanks, uh, do a little maintenance, water change. You can see the water in the new tank is beginning to whoops, take on a bit of a more amber color. Uh, it's from the driftwood obviously and stuff. And uh, the old tank, it's got some algae deposits and whatnot, not to mention that the core has been shifted, changed as usual you know busy busy ranas fighting and whatnot <laughs> uh the guppy tank got a little makeover nothing serious though sorry for the glare but yeah we'll give it a little scaping and just just so the guys can enjoy this uh <laughs> the kids can enjoy the guppy tank but we're gonna do some additional uh upgrades on it soon Anyway, let's get to it. You know, what I would like to do is basically show you how easy it is to set up your, you know, piranha habitat and how easy it is to maintain it. Uh, the setup you already saw, you know, just to build the, the core, get some driftwood and whatnot from outside and, uh, you know, substrate of your choice. Hopefully something that'll match their preference of their natural habitat, not necessarily yours. And then you can uh, compromise. So. Anywho, uh, let's get to it, yo. All right, so I'm gonna work on this thing first because it probably needs most work. That one is new, so it needs just a little water change. That one I'll take care of real quick with the glass cleaner. But this one's always a doozy. These guys are just really busy moving shifting things. What I like doing is basically move the glass out. That way I don't bump it and that's how I crack the last one. Once in a while I'll give this glass a scrub, you know, just to keep the clarity and whatnot. But in addition to today's maintenance, I will be also at Hi, good job, buddy. You do whatever you please. Play with your soldiers, play tablet, or hang out here with me. All right, then. That's, that's the best choice yet, I think. My favorite one is the puppy one. Okay, so what I would like to do is change these plexiglass, whatever things. Plexis. See, these are my old mm -hmm. setups. It still works. Might not throw it away necessarily. Like that but I like to substitute this with the polycarbonate. Might not throw it or break it. I'm gonna substitute it with the polycarbonate sheets that I got, much lighter, and since they are very moldable, you can cut them and whatnot, I'll be able to secure like a full sheet for the back, you know, to, uh, keep the piranhas or anything from jumping out, but most of all to keep that moisture in the tank. I noticed the condensation is enormous from these tanks at 78 degrees when it's 70 in here, and the humidity, you know, variance obviously from winter to summer. Okay, so let's continue on. First, I'm gonna shut this water off for just a minute. There we go. <sighs> Whoo! Piranha tank maintenance, huh? There it is. Whew. I won't be missing these anymore. See, I cut them out, so they had to go in. Ah, I don't know. Like I said, I was trying to be as precise, tight fit and all that, and sometimes it will work against you especially when you have to make adjustments or whatever. So you want to make things accessible, you know, where you have to maintain it. Even once in a while, it's always better to have access to it than having to modify everything all over again, you know, just to, just to make corrections. Let me fire up this thing back up. Put that right. It's also causing a lot of distraction for these guys, so. The water flow, it's like, uh, you know, the 
flooding and everything else that's going to come on me uh, moving around here, changing things, whatever, water change itself kind of announces like a drought to flood uh, change or whatever, change over in the nature, in the natural environment. Uh, usually a feeding would be, you know, preceding this, but we'll get to that later. Well, let's get to it. First I gotta set up the, you know, pick up any all uh, shifted or damaged or whatever, move the core, dead plants, rocks and whatnot. So I use this guy, a little tonsor, real long, you know, 18 inch whatever tweezers to reach the bottom. If I can't reach the, obviously if I cannot reach the bottom with my hands. Here we go. You know it's cool. I mean, I would zoom in to show you this, but right now I'm kind of busy. The barbarians are nipping on my skin, <laughs> picking up on any dead, whatever. You know, trying to get some food. These guys are amazing. They got no fear. See, the maintenance of the tank itself is not very complicated, you know, this, I set this up so it sort of maintained itself. So as you can imagine, piranhas are messy as hell. I mean, they really are a messy eater, messy swimmers, you know, complete disregard to their sur surroundings. They get what they want and how they get it and all that, colliding into things, you know, whatever. Just simply destroying what you thought or created <laughs> meticulously means nothing to them in all, you know, in all respect. So what you want to do is basically uh, maintain this kind of calm composure. As you can see, I'm moving slowly about the tank. They know who I am. They're really familiar with me. All of it. My scent, you know, posture, whatever, what have you. They're brilliant, very, very intelligent fish. But you still want to compose yourselves kind of slowly and, you know, without uh, spontaneity, I say, without any drama or whatnot. And that's simply to avoid them getting too excited. Not that they would bite me, but they would certainly start colliding into things, maybe even jump out. I don't want that to happen. All right. All right, let's take glass cleaner. What I need to do is clean the glass on the inside, however, these little green spots here, this little magnet doesn't have the strength to remove. So I have to do it manually. The rest of it I can use this. These green dots, they're just not coming off. So yeah, just like that, you know, slow, deliberate moves. Obviously, they're going to get somewhat stirred up and excited from it as well, and that's all good, you know. We'll play off of it by feeding them, by compensating them with some good food, whatever, treats. Like I said, you know, flood brings on new food, excitement, whatever. It doesn't have to be stress only, you know. There's going to be excitement, but there's going to be food. There's going to be something positive about it, which brings... Another factor of conditioning, which I always talk about. Conditioning is basically you setting up the environment that the you know, piranha grows up in. It's kind of like my cats and dogs. You know, well, the cats and dogs don't get along. If you see my Rottweiler and my cat, they're best friends. He will sit in the window wait for my cat to return from his ventures. That's how concerned they are for each other. So it's all part of conditioning, upbringing, and we all know that, how it works even in the human world because lots of my great friends, good friends, sincere friends, have kids and lots of them are adopted and lots of them are different color, different creed, whatever, what have you, yet they can't tell the difference, they're simply smiths. 
or Gregorages or what have you, not black, white, and whatnot. So it's all conditioning. These piranhas are ranas, which makes them unique to my household because of the traffic that's here, the lights, all of that. My son coming here and playing with them. That's all part of conditioning. All right, I think I did most of the upper areas. I'm just gonna hit up the along. See, they, they already had their fun for the day, trust me. They would like to everything to go back to normal now. We're really gonna do a flush out at this point only, which is like uh, my method of changing water where the water exits and enters at the same time, so there's no drop in the water level. Like when you use a python or traditional method of drain and fill. I use a flush out, which is hose in, hose out, and uh, a specific amount of time to uh, change out only a specific amount of water, which in this case is about 30-40%, I hardly change more than 50% at a time simply because my water is very good you know, parameters, very clean there's no need and if you change water very often or frequently you are, well, let's just say playing the odds that your water is always the same if you're using tap water if you're using well water you're a little better off like I am but still there's a little bit of deviance now and then from you know residuals runoffs to the from the ground heavy rains bringing you know diluted whatever sometimes uh, uh, fertilizer and oh, whatever used in the, in the groundwork or ground keeping in the area all that is all factored in into your water quality so I don't change my water too often for that reason, not to chance bringing in some disaster that I don't have to because the canister filters do a fantastic job, which we will clean up today. We'll go through that. But this will be the first time in six months, so maintenance, minimal. Anywho, change water 50%, not very often, simply because I don't want the runas to grow very fast. If you change the water often, you're diluting the hormone level in the water, allowing the fish to grow faster, especially if you're feeding them, you know, often and rich, they will grow quick. And this isn't a race to get the biggest fish in the neighborhood. I want the healthiest fish in the neighborhood, if anything. And I want to enjoy them for, you know, for the time being of this enclosure being only 210 gallons for nine individuals, which I raised from three quarter inch fry. So they're used to living together. They grew up together. Uh, assigned themselves a you know, leadership, whatever, packed hierarchy, and they're getting along fine in a smaller enclosure, which now it becomes you know, tighter and tighter each day. Eventually, I'll move them to this tank. We'll talk about this too. This big tank here, which all of them combined will be about 17 individuals and uh, 1,500 gallons. I think that would be good enough, you know, about 90 gallons a pop for a fish that gets about 10, 12 inches in captivity, not bad. Anyway, for now, for the time being, like I said, they're getting along, they're doing fine because they were raised together. The tank is at its limit, in my opinion, for their size and, you know, type of fish and everything else, so I wouldn't add any more fish in here. Uh, meanwhile, I will be preparing the other tank so they can move over there once more by uh, reducing the frequency of change, water changing, you are, you know, slowing down the growth rate. And, uh, and that is a fact. That is an undeniable fact that your fish will stay to the size of their enclosure. The fish will never reach that limit if you keep the water in the tank at a certain hormone level. If you were to flush the water out and keep it clean constantly, the fish will feel as if it's in a, you know, river with unlimited amount of water and It'll keep on growing. As far as health, we already know the rapid growth isn't good. We already know that pretty vibrant color isn't exactly an indication of health. So, trust me, keep the nature, you know, in a, at least back of your mind when you're approaching or taking care of living creatures, which 
nature takes care of, you know, the best. So mimic it, duplicate it, do your best. You know, don't try to bring in your own personal spin on things like or, uh, radioactive fish for that matter, you know, dive fish. What the, sorry, there ain't competition hands there for me. My buddy JJ says it's the best. I just cannot take anyone seriously, no matter what the question is. When I look at your tank and I see colored gravel and SpongeBob SquarePants decorations. Done. Anyway, moving forward, my friends, looking pretty good. Like I said, low maintenance. The decoration didn't get too trash this time around. So, a lot of blabbing. I know, I'll cut that out. This tank is pretty much done. All right, this tank. This tank needs a little clean out as well. So quick clean up of glass on this tank. Once more, well, I don't want too much glass to accumulate, uh, glass, too much algae to accumulate in the front glass, but also I want these guys to get used to this. As you can see, showing signs of stress. Basically, another process of basic, uh, you know, conditioning for these little guys to get used to me doing my routines here and basically, desensitize them to lights, movement, traffic, activities, which then will, you know, proceed to like a feeding or some kind of reward associated with a positive, favorable outcome, which obviously feeding is their very basic, in, you know, need, the primal need. So there's nothing more that we can appeal here right now. That's the only thing we have control over is their you know, their eating regimen, feeding regimen, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna capitalize on it and use it in conjunction to some sort of treatment, some sort of training. This is this is part of training right now. Maintenance, cleaning, and conditioning all in one. I'll be sticking my hands in there in a minute. Also to, you know, make some adjustments. There isn't, really isn't any. I'll just be doing that just for the same for the sake of, you know, preparing and getting them used to activities around the tank. Anywho, I know this part is boring and whatever, but that's, that's, that's what's up, you know, that's the maintenance. Get the glass clean, uh, especially when you're about to film, <laughs> record, just joking. Just keep the glass clean and keep the decor in place where you want it, otherwise it'll start piling up on top of each other or whatever and grow into a certain way and, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's up to you how much maintenance you want to perform. I do whatever is needed in a, like a cyclical event. So it means this, will, this process I will repeat every two weeks or so and then that process I will repeat every two weeks or so. So, you know, you don't get overwhelmed with one day, all this weather changes, which is not a good idea, and I'll tell you why. Recently, there's been a huge, like, a spike in some water conditioning parameter change in municipal water. A lot of uh, fish keepers have put out, you know, comments, whatever videos, warning about these water parameter changes, wiping out entire colony of fish. Think of it. Coming in one day, doing all water change, all in one day, and then suddenly all my fish are dead. Had I done just wet one tank, and then another, I probably would have found out something was up with the water, fish are dead, I'm not gonna change the rest of this until I change the water, that type of thing, you know? So I don't recommend changing your water all one time, all one day, for several reasons. <laughs> one of them being, you know, you could just kill your entire colony if there's something off with the water parameters, which has happened. Okay. So this is what's up. This tank is looking pretty good. I guess I'm gonna move to step two. This is a new kind of uh, tweakage here. So back to this water change real fast. I'll show you what I mean by flush in, flush out. Most of you are quite familiar with it already. Okay, so this is the hose I attached to that sink with the clamps. Like that, this will be the new hose. Alright, it took me a while, sorry, to gauge this water, but uh, yeah, like I said, anytime you start something new, there's going to be the, there's going to be deviations, so quick adjustments, don't worry, I'll edit most of this shit out, uh, 
I heard something about the past 30 second rule. I don't know what that means. I guess you can't swear within the first 30 seconds. Was that what, how it goes? I don't know. Well, there it is. Once again, we're going to secure this hose right here with this guy. That's all you have to do. More or less, I'll just basically direct the stream to where I wanted to go to blow away some of the particles, hoops, whatever, and uh, sit in the still spots, you know, or whatever. So that's what I'll do. There's a lot of placa poop. So obviously you know what's been going on in here. Placa poop attack. Anyway, they're good, but yeah, they, the drawback is they will chew down your uh, driftwood and produce a lot of dookies. So like, just like that, we're gonna leave this now. We should create this nice little flow. This picks up the degree that gets kicked up and gets sucked into this hose, so that helps them move them right away. And also canisters still catching on. So that's, that's the maintenance part. All right, so quick flush out. Like I said, this will take about 10, 15 minutes to complete it from you know where we started. I'm just gonna dust up some of the uh, rock areas still. That's kind of what it looks like. Piranha maintenance and care. Clean the tank. Rearrange your stuff, you know, fill in the water and whatnot that you've done. As soon as I'm done filling the water back up, I'm going to put the uh, polycarbonate sheeting back, you know, for this and this tank, modify it, get it done, get it finished. I still got to do a water flush out on this guy. Much anticipated, you know, <laughs> water maintenance, whatever, piranha tank maintenance and care, but as you can see, it's all different than any other fish tank. I mean, yeah, there's an added risk of getting bitten, but that just rarely happens, if ever. It never happened to me in seven months that I've been kicking on from this, you know, little to this size. I got another batch over here now, which is, you know, four inches or so, and getting more, I don't know, into the ranks of, of being considered dangerous. But almost there. But that's it. That's pretty much it. Easy stuff. You know, no danger, no immediate danger whatsoever. The only danger I would say that you have to consider is you scratching the glass while you're fumbling around in there, or you know, the water parameter, something being off, something being introduced that it shouldn't be in there, and. It throws off everything, God knows, and, and wipes out your fish, which would be the worst outcome yet, you know, out of all. So, yeah, no immediate danger. It's just kind of standard procedure as far as fish maintenance. It's just for me making a mess as usual, you know, buddy. You didn't find your pants? Did you finish your pancakes? Go find your pants. All right, all right, almost there. Let me grab the other hose. I think this should be long enough for what I need it to be. We're about to find out. Secure this end, simply in the tank, sink like this. Ta-da! Same technique. Drainage out, fillage back in. This should be nice and easy. What do we have here? We'll use this guy. Once more, you know, last things going flopping around and flooding your house. Your wives and girlfriends and whatnot uh, staying out of your business. <coughs> Until you flood the house, then yeah, it's, it's all their business at that point. It's a, it's a free-for-all. It usually ends up with some kind of fatality. <laughs> yeah, the, win, the wife will win this argument, that's for sure. Almost there. Then we're gonna do this one real fast, and then um, 
And that will conclude the water change for today. Like I said, the canister filters, I do change them up, but it, since it's another ordeal, it takes more you know, time, about an hour to drain some water and all that. And I'll go through that process. This will be different. This will be canister maintenance and setup or whatnot. You know, I already showed the uh, budget tips. Now we're going to see how we maintain it. And I'll do it every six months. So not going to come around often. Obviously, I'm not going to be putting out videos every two weeks of how to clean and maintain your tank because I do it once a month, twice a month, if that. On that token, there's a pretty good representation of something that you can easily achieve that will sort of maintain your, itself without resorting into some backwards, old age, confusing, complicating sump pump bullshit. Sorry, that's my take on sump pumps. If you have a thousand gallon fish tank and you need a 300 gallon freaking sump pump to run it, that to me is an overkill and an entire, you know, uh, what you call it, uh, entirely old, outdated, inefficient way to filter water. This is 210 gallons with two little canister filters, which aren't putting out no 525 gallons per hour with as much media as I incorporate in there and the way I set it up and everything so the water's crystal. Yeah, and they're only putting out probably 250, 300. Combined 600, 700 maybe, uh, but it's enough. So don't buy into this bullshit that you need to have six FX whatever to filter your water with three uh, guppies in it or something, you know, just because the manufacturer or the standard or whatever, just like with the viscous. I notice a lot of people rave about discs and how difficult they are, what you have to do and don't have to do and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water parameters and conditioning and basically keeping, maintaining stable environment and they're done as far as any fish, most fish, you know. So, same with fish tanks. Build it so you can maintain it, sustain it, not so you have to hustle and be, you know, bothered by it and feel like it's a chore because that's kind of what it's gonna feel like when you're uh, when you overdo it, you do it overkills, you know, as I say it, as I call it, and then you have no time to, you know, or money to maintain it. Everyone can see what we're doing on this guy. The maintenance on this side now, which is the same, same concept, flush in, flush out. Oh, I didn't know you had it. Pipes going in, hoses going out. I didn't know you had As you can see, the piranhas are pretty stressed out. They're hiding all grouped, packed in behind the rock. Yeah. This is new for them. The feel of you know water replenishment and all the movement and all that stuff is accompanied with a lot of uh, you know uh, new sort of activity, and that's why they're behaving this way. They're adjusting. They'll be used to it in no time. Look at that. Water's filling up. Doing a little quick water change. We're not doing a big water change because there really isn't a need for it. Yeah. We're just conditioning the fish, you know, diluting some of the uh, tenants. You already see algae growth on the background, which is awesome. Started turning into more like a natural look. It won't be long before it all starts to settle in and look very, very natural. That's the. That seems to be the objective Daddy, here. Yeah. You should do that. Ten hours later, and then ten hours later, and then do the one where um, it's down. Yeah, I'll do that ten hours later. All right, yeah, you guys. So uh, once more, water change, and uh, we're almost done. We're filling up as soon as we reach the brim. You know, my flush in, flush out method. We'll basically uh, conclude and. About a 30% water change, and that's the idea. The water is new, the tank is new, there's not much maintenance required in that one. Um, but if you're gonna do it, might as well do it uh, with some sort of. You gotta do it, you know, with uh, according to you, you know. So that's my method right here. All right, you guys, uh, I'm almost done, so I'll give you an update in a minute. Yeah? How do you figure? They know it's danger, huh? Well, they're still trying, but they know they're, they have to be careful, right? Cautious. Cautious. 
caution is a good measure or a good step to self-preservation. Where is caution? Caution is just what I said. It's a way to save yourself from getting in trouble or dying or what, what, what not. You know, some kind of bad thing happening to you. By you being cautious, you're avoiding it. Bad things to happening to you. Mm. Sorry, you guys. Didn't mean to bend you like that, but yeah, we're uh, cranking away. Almost done. Once it's hitched the brim, you know, fills to the brim, it's over, and we'll be done with our water change and maintenance for uh, Piranha. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's it. Pretty easy. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Standard procedure, maintenance, water, and you know, uh, whatever. Basic, basic keep up, you know, keeping up with your fish hobby, fish uh, keeping by doing remedial, mandatory, whatever you want to call it, scheduled or sporadic water changes and whatnot. I, I dig my, uh, you know, I put my hands in that tank almost every day adjusting stuff in there because they move it around and whatnot and that wore conditioning them to you know being being uh somewhat reciprocal to me instead of hiding and whatnot otherwise we would be filming in the dark uh sorry about the light glare you know bright light when they're young a little dimmer when they're older but still quite bright a lot of movement a lot of you know hustle and bustle and, <laughs> and you will uh basically create and basically you'll be able to create your own environment for your for your guys you know for your fish so anywho once again thank you for joining me for those that are new here my name is Marek everyone calls me Bear or Bearski and this is my cave a piranha cave and this is my method my way of basically keeping critters natural organisms or whatever you want to call it pets companions one way or another they're not your possession so deal with it accordingly do what it takes, you know, what is necessary, not what's convenient. All right, you guys, we're done. Right, Rom? Finally finished. Ah, uh, man, well, check it out. Here's the final product. The water's still settling in. <laughs> the water's still settling in. Um, here's the other one. Let me close this lid. So, yep. All set. Uh, as you can see, here's are my modifications. I don't know if you can see. I installed these new lids. Uh, carbon, polycarbon carbon lids. There you go, you can see them now. Yep, on this tank, as well as this tank. Basically keep the splashing out and, you know, condensation low and all that. So, there it is. Uh, piranha maintenance and care fish tanks is no different than most fish tanks. However, you do have to exercise a bit of, bit of a caution. Um, they do have teeth and when spooked and startled, become dangerous even to themselves by simply, by simply uh, overreacting, you know, getting all panicky and frightened and whatnot and um, it can easily cause injury to themselves. So, that's it, you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by, for joining me on these adventures. Um, once more, I appreciate your uh, input. And until uh, next time, see you then.